this is the antenna I had up in my temporary location and it is a very temporary antenna but it works really good so I rolled it all up and we're gonna unroll it now the antenna was just a little long I'm gonna say probably a half inch too long so I'm gonna take a half an inch out of it and lower my SWRs on uh, 27385 because what it is is this antenna is a bit too long so I have very good flat SWRs from about channel 5 to a few channels below 1 and so what I want to do is shorten it and then that'll move my sweet spot up a little higher okay so I've got it all unwound I got the ends here and I'm going to take off about a half inch on each end I hope I got that in the shot. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to retape the feed point here. So I guess blowing around all winter at my other location it kind of messed with this. So I'm going to redo this. Apparently the the heat shrink ripped or something, but so this is the vertical radiator right here coming out of the center lead of the coax. The ground lead of the coax has three other radials or three other wires to act as radials. And at first I cut this to 102 inches exact for each leg. That's the driven leg and the ground radials. So I've taken off a half an inch. So if everything goes right this will take my SWRs down on 38. Uh, on either side of 385 a few and we'll see how this works so I had this at a altitude or the, 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 the vertical radiator was maximum 12 feet from the ground to the tip of this radiator and so uh, that line that I just threw up there now is about 20 feet so that should uh, help out just a little bit that extra 8 feet is going to help I put this socket on the end of some 20 pound test threw it up in the trees was trying to get up to that branch but I only made it down to that one so I'm just gonna have to deal with it that's still a good 20 something feet off the ground about 20 feet so now that I've got the weight up on the branch up and over the branch and then down through the rest of the tree the next deal is to uh, tie the uh, wire antenna to the end of that and start hoisting okay, it up. So here's what I did. I cut the, uh, the fishing line, tied it on to the end of the dipole, just like a fishing knot. And got the rest down there. And the dogs are going to help me. Hi, Winston. How you doing, buddy? We're going to put up an antenna, bro. Right on. You happy about that, buddy? Yeah, Winston's all excited. He likes to sit and shoot skip with me. All right, back to work. Here's something I'm going to do a little different with this one. On the ground radials, I've tied 10 feet of fishing line. Okay, to each radial. At the end of the fishing line, let's see, where is one here? At the end of the fishing line, I have a nut for a weight. And what that's going to allow me to do, that's going to allow me to adjust the angle of my radials all right now I've had I've tested with my radials at an angle like a ground plane kind of like a star duster and a dipole to some folks I sounded good like this some folks I sounded better like this I noticed that once you're about in this area right here it pretty much doesn't matter so as far as you know the difference between here and here so maybe the Starduster guys had something. I don't know. Might cause a little bit of interference with your neighbors. I prefer my ground plane radials to be horizontal. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think they're going to be more like this. But I have plenty of areas to tie off to. So I added those on to play around with it. Just to be able to adjust it and uh, experiment. So let's hoist the rest of this sucker up in the air.
Anyway, with a few interruptions and a little bit of effort, I got the ground radials laid out somewhat. Got this one that goes northwest into the tree. And there's the fishing line. I got another one down here. Going into the patio right there. And then another leg right like that. Is it a perfect ground plane? No. But I've done this with my RV antenna and I've actually done it with just one leg, just like a dipole, right? Where you just have one leg. And I put it at about a 45 or so and had really good luck. So the other two are just frosting, gravy, whatever you want to call it. So I got enough coax in here, going to the patio. It's not truly vertical, but it's pretty close. So. All right. Well, I got stuff to do right now, so unfortunately I can't tune the SWRs or check the SWRs, R's, I should say, yet. So stay tuned. Let's wrap it up. We're done. Uh, dude, I, oh, I wish you could smell this pork roast I got going here. Oh, wait. Anyway, uh, so I got the coax here. Yes, this is just ultra temporary. But the deal is I want to show you guys how quick and how easy it is to set up a working emergency CB radio station. Or most any radio. I mean, if it's two meters is your thing or whatever, you can make a little two meter dipole. If you're in a 10 meters, just cut it a little bit shorter. You're on 10. So here's what I got. I got my radio. I got a buddy on 38. It's talking, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my SWR. Now, my meters are still in storage, so I have to go on the meter on this radio. Now, I don't always trust these meters, but this one's been fairly close overall. So here I'm going to key up. That's a decent SWR. So it's about a one to two, one to four. Let's go up a little higher. Well, actually, let's go, no, let's go low. Because I'm doing this with one hand. Okay, so there's one. Look at that, almost flat on one. One to two, maybe on 40. That's not bad. That's with a full 10 watt key. Um, 101 and a half inches in case anybody's keeping track got my little emergency power supply this is a 15 amp led power supply i've got my long cord it's going into my little wall receptacle here now is this ideal no but i wanted to get a signal out i've already talked to my buddy worldwide world radio 99 darren um i've got him about an s10 s9 but he's about 10 on peaks and he has me at about an S5. And we are approximately, oh my gosh, 20 miles apart. So that's not bad considering the tip of my antenna is just maybe 20 foot in the air. Killer SWRs. We have success. Now, before when my antenna was up only 12 feet high, um, I was hitting him about an S3 and 4. So I came up an S unit with the extra height. I am about a mile and a half closer to him as I was before, um, and I have shot Skip off of it. So with the extra, in fact, I've worked, uh, for, I'm here in Salt Lake City, so I've worked from Salt Lake City to my boys up in Port Angeles, Catbox, waving a hand. Um, that was on 6 a.m. with no power. Um, on single sideband, I've been working Washington, Oregon, um, California, Arizona, uh, Denver, Colorado. So it works. Anyway, literally this is almost a free antenna. Just get you just a chunk of coax, um, some just spool off some wire. That's all I did. I just used some 18 gauge copper stranded wire. It's just cheap Chinese wire. A little bit of fishing line. All right, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll keep you guys posted on the station setup because I'm going to throw my tower, my beam, get my station back up. But currently, I'm just running 
QRP on the patio. Barbecuing. Oh, man. That hickory smells so good. Over and out.